I want to share seven signs of a leaky gut. We're dealing with this gut wall. And what happens is we have this really thin single layer of cells that is the barrier between your inside of your intestines versus the outside, where we have protection and absorption of about 90% of all the nutrients. You have a mucus layer there. You have a lot of microbes. You have 80% of your immune system in that location. And when you have leaky gut, you have the start of inflammation. But let's take a look at what the medical profession says about having inflammation in your gut, okay? Dietary measures to improve this inflammation in your gut, you should increase soluble fiber intake. Now, right off the bat, that's the absolute worst thing to do if you have inflammation in your gut is to take more fiber. In fact, you want to just take that information and do the opposite. You want to go carnivore if you have inflammation in the gut, especially if it's very, very severe. Because as you add more fiber, you're going to create more inflammation. All right, I'm not done. I want to show you a couple other things here. If we look at the cause of this problem, the first thing it says, while the causes of inflammation are still unknown, it is believed that the entire gut-brain axis is affected. They're talking about the connection between your gut in your brain. And so it doesn't really give us any more information about causation, but it does talk about risk factors being older, prolonged fever, anxiety, depression. Genetics can be a problem. They're talking about alteration in the gut microbiome. Okay, I agreed with that. Then they get into management, not curing it, but let's manage it. The number of treatments have been found to be effective. Increasing fiber, no, you don't want to do that. Uh, talk therapy, antispasmodic medication, and antidepressants. Okay, so then they get into physical activity. You should exercise. Then they talk about medications. Then they're getting into vagus nerve stimulation. Okay, but you know what's missing? They're not talking about changing the diet. What you need to know is that most diseases are triggered by something that happens in your gut, and it has everything to do with the food that you're eating. It's not in Wikipedia, and so it's kind of missing information. And the problem is you don't see it because it's missing, and for the average person doing research, uh, they won't really connect the dots most of the time. Now, there's other things that go beyond food or that are in food that can create a problem, like broad spectrum antibiotics. You start messing with your gut microbiome and that's when you start to really go downhill because you need those microbes to help you digest. You don't need to piss them off and have them change the relationship to be more pathogenic. And then you have also other things in the food supply like an herbicide called glyphosate in the GMO food. They actually patent it as an antibiotic. Now, if you look at glyphosate, they say, well, doesn't it doesn't affect the human body. Well, yeah, it affects bacteria that are in your body. And so you start exposing yourself to too much glyphosate, and now that creates an antibiotic effect. And then you're told to consume whole grains. Wow. If you consume whole grains while you have a leaky gut, you are going to allow materials that go through that hole into your immune system, and it's gonna create a huge immune reaction. You're gonna start developing allergies to all sorts of things that maybe you didn't have before, and not just with whole grains, but with other foods too, like the proteins. If you give a small child milk, the proteins in that milk can cause leaky gut because the child does not have the ability to digest those proteins early on at that age. And so now you actually create an irritation, a hole, bleeding, and that's one of the causes of anemia in small children that consume this milk too early. But of course, breast milk won't do it. And then if we take a look at the protein in grains, gluten. Gluten is one of the only proteins that our bodies cannot digest. And then I think the last thing that really destroys this gut lining is seed oils. So when you start to develop this leaky gut, we get 
this injury, we get inflammation. Like if you right now had a cut on your finger and it was all red and it was swollen, you could see it, you can protect it, you could put a bandaid on it. But if that's happening inside your colon, you can't see it. How do you know it's inflamed? I'm about to give you the symptoms to let you know. Number one, of course, you're going to have abdominal pain or cramping in any part of the lower abdomen. I lived with that for decades, and I just kind of pushed through. I thought it was normal. You should never have pain, cramping, or any type of bloating in your digestive system. That means there's some type of inflammation going on. That's number one. Number two, constipation or diarrhea. Number three, you're going to be fatigued because you're not digesting. And because food's not getting the full digestion, you're going to lack energy. Then number four, you're going to feel brain fog. So it's going to start to affect not just fatigue, but clarity. Number five, it's going to affect your mood. You're going to have anxiety. And it's actually related to your digestion. Number six, skin inflammation. Whatever's going on in your skin is a really good indication of your digestion. And being in practice for 30 years, I will tell you, these people that came in with skin problems, you just fix the gut and their skin problems go away. If someone has really good skin, you know their digestion is good. And last one, number seven, autoimmune diseases. 80% of your immune system is in the gut. And when you invade the immune system and you bypass it and you bypass normal immigration and it no longer gets the stamp of approval, it gets into the body and your body starts developing antibodies it's against your own tissues and it can be in any tissue. And now what happens is you start getting inflammation in that area because we have this constant attack. Your body now considers certain normal tissues foreign or a pathogen. And so if it identifies the thyroid as being the invader, it'll start creating inflammation on your thyroid gland as a condition called Hashimoto's. And that originated in the gut. And it started with inflammation and leaky gut. One of the best things you can do for any type of gut inflammation is eliminate a lot of the things that are creating the inflammation. And this is where I would recommend the carnivore diet for a couple of months to start to heal the gut by eliminating all the things that are creating inflammation. In parallel with that, I would recommend taking something called glutamine and glycine, two things that can actually heal it. And if you're on the carnivore diet, you're consuming a lot of red meat and things like that, which are loaded with glutamine. And so that can help you right there. But there's a little bit more information you need to know about this topic. And for that, check out this video right here.